Hello everybody, today on Downtime Recap, I will be your host, Alan, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about Blizzard Activision. Yes, I know, there's like a billion pieces of news about the entire new empire forming and whatnot. But we're gonna be talking a little bit about why the merger happened, because Bobby Kotick and Phil uh, Spencer from Xbox have actually gone into a little bit of information about how it came to happen and why it came to happen at this time. Then we have Toasty, she is a Twitch streamer who has a little bit of advice for you guys about joking about your age on Twitch, with an example. And then we have Raven Software, who've actually uh, you know, created a union, which is uh, in the American sense of game devs, uh, not very common. So there is that, which is something Xbox is actually inheriting from Blizzard Activision. And then we're gonna be talking about Denmark's newest gaming festival, which is starting up, called Gamebox Festival. It's going to be kicking off here in April, and we're just going to cover a little bit about what we know so far and what's going to be happening in the near future. As such, I just want to say thank you for watching, and this is Downtime Recap. The user Toasty on Twitch actually has a little bit of a PSA going on that she uploaded to her, uh, you know, Twitter because uh, one of her users decided to joke about his age on the channel, saying he was only 12, only 13, and then changed it to only 12. And people forewarned him that probably you shouldn't do that because Twitch has a lot of bots that aggressively go after people that are underage on the platform. So if you actually say your age or anything like that, the Assume theory is that uh, one of the bots will discover that. See when you like uh, added your channel into the mix or when you like, you know, created your channel, which would be before that age. And then uh, the user was probably banned. Uh, we don't want to talk too much about it, but there is a really nice clip about it that you can see right here. Trust these things like entirely, obviously. Um, I'm 13. You can't joke about that because you're allowed to be 13. You can't say I am 12. I'm 12, guys, again. I have seen people get banned for that in my own channel. If you say I'm 12 and then go haha joke, there's a bot on Twitch that will just ban you. So don't even, don't, no! Husey, all it takes is for someone to report you and you're gone. I think Husey might be gone. Wait, no. Your account Husey has been indefinitely suspended. No, it hasn't. Is it Husey and then one underscore? Yeah, you changed it to one. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Moving on to E3, which is one of the biggest electronic expo events in the world still, even though they have lost a little bit of ground probably to the Game Awards that are doing really great and shilling out game productions and new trailers and new launches and new upcoming everythings. E3 actually just announced that they're going to be launching a 2022 online version of their expo again, as they did last year due to the Omicron uh, virus. This uh, situation is... Uh, Kind of hard for event makers and all over the world everyone's doing what they want to do and what they can do to make sure that it doesn't go bad but uh, they did it in a pretty like uh, interesting way where they launched a press statement that was about four lines long the press statement goes due to the ongoing health risks surrounding covid 19 and its potential impact on the safety of exhibitors and attendees e3 will not be held in person in 2022 we remain incredibly excited about the future of e3 and look forward to announcing more details soon that was the entire press release. Short to the point. Moon on. During this entire recent Activision and Blizzard like uh, mayhem maelstrom of uh, all this information and news coming out, we also have a little bit of a tidbit based on Raven Studio, which is one of the studios that was owned by Activision Blizzard, which has now moved on into the Microsoft family. But other than that, the fact was that they had actually gotten 34 QA testers together that had actually started a union together. And that union is, uh, you know, Something that Xbox now inherited now that they've been purchased out by Activision Blizzard and they were subsidiaries of that. And one of the things that was really weird for a European to read was the following in an article by Bloomberg. A spokesperson for Activision said the company is reviewing the request for recognition. While we believe that a direct relationship between the company and its team member delivers the strongest workforce opportunities, we deeply respect the rights of all employees under law to make their own decisions about whether or not to join a union. So the reason that's weird for us is it kind of sounds like another union busting attempt in the sense that they're just saying like, well, we don't like unions, but man, we'll tolerate it because it's the law, which is kind of like, you know, we would wish more people were in unions with everything going on with, you know, too much crunch and everything else. But hey, 
It seems that uh, there is a gaming union out there and it's a bunch of QA testers from Raven Software that got that done. So hey, there is still hope for the rest of the gaming unions to like start up. Even though we have seen admonishable campaigns by people like Amazon who did union busting commercials for their company on Twitch, that did not go over well back then. And likewise, uh, you know, maybe support unions a little bit more, but America, hello? That's a little bit political. You do you. Like we'll, we'll stick with our Scandinavian models over here. And now since we're going through the final phases of like a million news stories about Activision Blizzard, what it means for the companies, what it means for King, what it means for everybody else, Bobby Kotick and Phil Spencer were actually live on CNBC News and they actually had an interview that went really well. And they've already started putting out other interviews that are going really well in the sense that they're actually explaining why things happened and how they happened. And it didn't seem to be very, you know, like conspiracy theory like. It seems that all they did was, uh, you know, Phil Spencer from Xbox and Bobby Kotick, they seem to have a very good working relationship and like to talk about the industry. And Phil actually just said, hey man, what about if we, you know, buy you? And uh, Bobby said like, yeah, it seems like a good time. So more in depth on that for you guys that are trying to follow along. It seems that Blizzard Activision had some issues now pushing Overwatch into Overwatch 2 and it's been delayed and Diablo 4 has been delayed. And then there's also like the new Call of Duty isn't getting much traction. So the share prices were falling a little bit. And Bobby Kotick is uh, the ultimate CEO in everything uh, CEO-ish in share prices. Maybe not management of the studio, but I mean, he's trying, I guess. He's going to be making about 250 to 400 million dollars based on this buyout, which is absolutely insane money. But enough about that. The situation goes as follows. Bobby and Phil had a call. They said it seems like a good time to buy you guys. And they went, yeah, sure, you can buy us. And it kind of stops right there. Uh, they literally went for it. Bobby Kodak pretty much just goes into like the fact that it was a great deal. I mean, he quotes it as it's a good deal for our shareholders. So that's what he went for and that's what made sense for him. And now he's apparently also leaving the company. So now everything that was before an Activision Blizzard mess is now a Microsoft mess. But we're going to give them a benefit of a doubt that they can solve these things. So let's just see how it goes from there. If anything, there is also a nice CNBC YouTube clip that you can watch with the entire interview. How did this deal come about? And Bobby, I'll start with you. Uh, this is a company where you've been the CEO for almost 31 years, started out with a company that you bought out of bankruptcy for $400,000. Now looking at evaluation again, this deal values it at about $80 billion. Um, how did this happen? How did you get to this place? Moving on into the next piece of news, we're going to be talking about a new gaming festival that has started in Denmark. A lot of people might not know about this in the rest of Scandinavia or whatnot because, you know, they're marketing it only to Danes, but it does seem like it has really good potential to become a big up and comer Nordic player. So we just wanted to feature it here. We're talking about Gamebox Festival. Gamebox Festival is a new, uh, you know, I mean, new and new. They started the planning on this apparently a few years ago, but due to COVID, you know, it kind of stopped a little bit uh, on the planning situation for them. But Game on, Gamebox Festival is kind of like a Dreamhack-esque kind of type event. It's got a land, it's got a festival section. They've rebranded a lot of areas for themselves. They have some major partners included. Uh, the Danish bank, Juske Bank, is part of it. And then you've got uh, El Giganten is going to be the main partner of it, alongside with Astralis and all the local gaming unions and all the national sporting unions that have uh, an interest inside of esports, as well as Nitpati Hanning, which is a local land party uh, provider. So they're going to be having a few areas. There's a play box where you can like, try games and do different kinds of stuff there, apparently. There's going to be an unbox where they're going to look at new products and everything else. I think El Giganten is going to be mainly a part of that. Then you've got the battle box where they're going to have a main stage with like 5v5 setups. And also there's going to be potential for some other interesting activities happening there. But overall, what we looked at when we saw the pitch deck and we saw the video release and everything else was it looks like a very well-planned event. It looks really good. One of the things that everyone in the scene right now is commenting, though, is kind of like it just needs more, you know, endemic content. It needs more of like the, what you expect from a gaming event. But slowly but surely, they're putting out information out there and they've already pre-sold a lot of tickets, which is one of the more positive things. All of the local unions are backing this up. And as an alternative to other events in Denmark in April, it seems like it's going to be the go-to event. The only thing that might be a little bit tough for people that might want to go visit is the fact that it is in Hanning, Denmark. So you probably have to take a plane to Kastrup or to Bilon Airport and then take a train up. But it does seem like this actually looks like it's going to be a very nice event. The pictures they launched are pretty sweet, to be honest. And a lot of the people that are involved in the Danish scene are already talking about it as potentially being like the next biggest thing. 
And that's also what we've heard from some of the people that are behind the event. They've talked about it directly, saying like they want to make this the center of Danish gaming. So if you're looking for an event you want to visit in April and maybe the COVID situation allows for it, then probably you might want to check out Gamebox Festival for the first year. Make your decision if you like it and then keep going. They are going to be keeping it very Danish marketed, like the websites in Danish and everything else. But I mean, hey, they're going to be having a lot of different things. So just check it out. I've been told to be a little bit more energetic in these videos, but I don't know how to be more energetic. I'm, I'm, I've drunk so much coffee, you know, I'm just freaking out, man. But yeah, downtime recap, it's been fun. Until further notice, enjoy the videos. We're going to be doing more.